Hello, today is my 2022 book awards and superlatives. I feel like I've been talking about 2022 books for forever, but I, I really haven't. It's just that other people start in December and I cannot convince my brain to do that. So we are still talking about them now. But this is my opportunity to talk about books that aren't all favorites, although a lot of these are favorites or least favorites that I've already talked about. Um, but a lot of these also aren't. So this is a mix of Kayla, formerly of Book of Doodles, book awards that she used to do when she was here on BookTube. Also, I've taken some questions that Mara has used in the past from books like Whoa for her superlatives. We're kind of doing a mix. Um, I could have probably added some other things too, but I think this kind of covers it. So let's get into it. First is favorite male protagonist. Now, I actually had a problem with this because I only read 14 books out of the 100 that I read last year that even had a male protagonist and all but two of those were multiple POV. So it's kind of hard to be like, oh, this is my favorite male protagonist. Cause like when it's like an ensemble cast, it's like a little bit different. So I ended up going with Serapio for this. I reread Black Sun and then read Fevered Star right before the end of the year. And I think Serapio is one of the best boys. Um, but again, he's in an ensemble cast as well. I like him more in Black Sun than in Fevered Star because he's not quite in Fevered Star as much. He's much more of the focus in Black Sun, but this is a character with a ton of trauma who is potentially the embodiment of the Crow God. Uh, and we get a lot in especially book one of his backstory and his relationship with a like siren woman that forms throughout who's also a POV character. And it's just delightful. So I think he's one of my favorites because a lot of the other ensemble cast characters that I read about that were men did not stand out to me. As far as favorite female protagonist, so many more to choose from here. Two favorites. One, Nahri from the Dave Abad trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. I just love her. I love the growth she goes through. She's the only character that I think you can reasonably pull for the entire series. The rest are just like, <sighs> I don't know. It's, it's really hard. This is very morally gray. They're, they all sort of have a point in their own way, but they're all also kind of bad. So she's the only one that you can kind of be like, yes. Uh, and I just love the growth that she goes through throughout the series and her magic and everything. Like from where she is at the beginning to where she is at the end. Beautiful. Another character that I've been loving is Kate Daniels from the Kate Daniels series by Alana Andrews. She is a badass. She reminds me sort of of like Buffy the Vampire Slayer grown up in a way. A lot of the same kinds of like snark, uh, a lot of the same just being a huge badass. Um, the way that she interacts, this is an urban fantasy series, and the way that she interacts with other people and other creatures and things is just great across the board and I just really dig her and I'm excited to see more of her journey. I'm hoping to read more of those books this year. I mean, I know I will at some point. So it's a nine book series, I believe, maybe 10. Uh, and I'm only three in, but I'm looking forward to more of her because she is a delight. Best cover. I think of all of the books that I've read, I, I said this the last previous couple of years, that book covers are no longer as ugly as they used to be. So it's not like standout covers are a rarity anymore, but I do quite like the cover for Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. I didn't even pay attention to it a ton when I first got it, but there's something about this like fairy tale-esque and it, this is a gothic dark fairy tale, the, the feel of this, the print and even the way that this is laid out. Then if you pay attention to it, I didn't even really pay attention to it until I started reading it. She has like some wild hair going on, right? She's holding a snake that's eating a mouse. Like that just, this ties so well with the vibes of this story of like, this is unsettling, but you don't even necessarily see it when you first, oh, and then we have like sort of like a halo going on. You don't necessarily see it. And then you look and you're like, oh my God. So yeah, the vibes of this completely match the story in my opinion. Then I have best male and best female sidekick. I have not read a lot of books with like sidekicks recently. So I might eliminate this in the future, but I just didn't have the mental energy to do it for this video. But I'm gonna say sort of favorite ensemble cast, and that'd be the characters in the galaxy and the ground within by Becky Chambers. This is all aliens. So it's all aliens stuck at a waypoint uh, because of just like technology issues. And so they kind of have to be together, work together, form this little like kind of temporary found family. It's very sweet. And just the combination of all of them, so delightful. And just like the differences in cultures and misunderstandings and communication, but also coming together, just a delight. Most unique plot slash world, St. Death's Daughter by C.S.E. Cooney. This is weird. 
weird book. I've done a review on this, I believe. This has so much in it in a way that can be a little bit confusing. I've seen some people say it's like a little bit overdone and like a little bit just a lot. But last year, I think I talked a little bit about the Lock Tomb series in this category. And I could have probably done that again, although I didn't really love uh, Nona quite as much as I love the other books in the series. This gives me similar vibes without being at all a similar story. There's death magic. It's a little bit more like eccentric and whimsical in a way. There's a lot of like bird magic. There's a lot of different like gods and deities and things. It's just a really weird story and a thing that is very unique. Even when necromancy as a plot line is not necessarily unique, the way that it's done in here, the way that the magic works in here, the different types of magic in here, all things that we've maybe seen in some capacity, but combined here, incredibly unique. The cultures in here, yeah, just very interesting. Best writing. I read a lot of really well-written books this year, but again, have to point to Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. I mean, this popped up on my favorites list for a reason. Just because of the quality of the writing, the descriptions, and the unsettling nature of this gothic horror story, that is really well done without it being like too overly done. There are scenes like right now, my brain is flashing to like a description that they have in this book. It's just like, oh my God, visceral. Also, I really enjoyed the writing in The Once and Future, which is by Alex C. Harrow. Not in a like floweriness or anything, but the way that this story is about witches and a witchcraft movement and things and, and the way that fairy tale is used and interwoven, the symbolism behind Mother Maiden and Crone within witchcraft lore, like the beats and the way that the story is done in a very like fairy tale way, all of that was really intentional and well done. Then we have most correctly hyped, most overhyped, and most underhyped. Most correctly hyped was Iron Widow by Sierra and Jay Zhao. I think this is not perfect, and there are definitely people that don't like necessarily love this, but most people really do. It gave what I was expecting it to give and more, and just the correct amount of hype for this book. Most underhyped, I have two. One is Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. I've kind of hyped this book a little bit uh, over the last year or so because this was a book that I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did. It has a lot of things that I know a lot of people like myself love as far as like sentient forests and animal companions and like that kind of stuff, nature magic. And it's like a, you know, sort of B-list, backlist, mid-list, whatever you want to say, kind of title for YA that I think a lot more people would enjoy and I think more people should read it. Also favorite star by Rebecca Roanhorse. I, this slipped in right at the end of the year. So yeah, I haven't had a lot of chance to talk about it, but people I had heard weren't as happy with this second book and didn't really like it and whatever. And so it was very like underhyped. A lot of people weren't necessarily thinking they were gonna continue with the series. I loved the second book. It's a, a little bit different from the first book because the first book has this buildup to this big event that's happening. And so there's just like countdown nature to it, which I just think is hard to sort of top in a second book. But I liked this almost just as much. It had an expansion of the gods and the symbolism of the gods and the character growth and things. A lot of people say that it's a lot of moving of chess pieces and there definitely is that, but there's a lot of expansion of character dynamics, interactions, personalities and character arcs. So I think this is still a really solid second book in a series and is very underhyped in my opinion. Most overhyped, there's a few. I already talked about some of my disappointing reads and things like that, but I will be a little spicy with this. Um, I could talk about the bone season, although I feel like people don't talk about that as much anymore in a lot of my other overhyped books, but I think I'm ultimately gonna have to go with the Texcalon duology by Arcana Martine. This is a two-time Hugo Award winner and one for both books in the series. And while I don't think these books are bad, I don't think they're Hugo Award winning quality in my opinion. So yeah, these just didn't resonate with me as much as they apparently resonate with a lot of people. So it's one of those books where I'm kind of like, am I wrong? And you can't be wrong, books are subjective but I, ju I just don't get it. I get a lot of the other Hugo winners over the years. Like I get the Broken Earth trilogy winning for every single book. I don't get this winning for both. Biggest reading accomplishment for the last year? I would say the biggest thing is starting and finishing six whole series in the last year. So like started it and finished it. There are some that I even like went back and reread one book to then like complete the whole thing. I'm counting that in this stat. But reading like a whole series, reading a whole trilogy within one year and reading six of those, I think that's pretty good. And then finishing up 11 series overall in addition to those six. I really like those numbers. I love wrapping up series and then starting new ones, but it like opens up room for starting new ones. And I like that. Favorite new to me author, Avery. Talking about Avery a lot in this video, but 
these superlatives just happen to match them. Two of my favorite books of the year were Ava Reed books, and now I'm committed to them as an author. I also quite like Peter Jelly Clark, and I plan to read more of him when more books come out. I don't know what to use for this, but it's something that I want to mention this sort of like superlative -y way. So maybe it's like favorite genre I'm dipping into, although I don't think I'm gonna have an answer for this every single year. Maybe like subgenre. But gothic horror, guys. I think something's starting. I think something's a brewing. I read a number of like gothic horror -y books within the last year and quite enjoyed them. I read Mexican Gothic, I read Juniper and Thorn, I read Dowry of Blood. I think, I think I can do the gothic horror. We will see. And I think that is it for my superlatives for 2022. Comment them below, let me know some of these answers for you. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.